Hi everyone, welcome to How to Be a Winter Wellness Warrior webinar with Charlotte Conter. Hi. <laughs> and Alicia Mathlin, your holistic wellness mavens. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, we're so happy to have you here. Let's just jump right into it. My health journey started uh, just over 10 years ago when um, you know I got suddenly mysteriously ill. I had been living a very fast-paced life, working 12-hour days and not nourishing myself. And <laughs> I was in a toxic relationship and I wasn't eating well or even really thinking about what I was putting into my body. Everything was fast. There's a lot of anger based on the fact that I had built a life on uh, other people's expectations, and it just didn't work out for me. Um, I found my way to holistic wellness and became a meditation instructor, a yoga teacher, as well as a holistic nutritionist, and um, I'm looking forward to sharing what I've learned with you here today. Alicia is awesome. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you a little bit how I started my journey. Um, one, I've always been into sports. I mean, the moment I, I think I turned four and I was able to start playing soccer, my dad put me in. Um, so I've always been passionate about health and wellness. And um, when I, in my early 20s, I grew up with a single mom with three kids, so we did not eat very well. I will say the microwave was our best friend. Canned food was our best friend. Um, I never tasted a, you know, a real pea until my... Um, I would say like mid twenties, and I was like, I thought peas were disgusting, like you know, canned peas. And I tasted a real pea, and I was like, damn, this is so good. <laughs> um, but in my um, early twenties, my mom was diagnosed with diabetes, and I went to her workshop, and I was like, mom, this has everything to do with your diet. And then shortly after, my dad had two strokes back to back almost, and uh, and again, um, read all his material that he brought home from the hospital, and again, it all had to do with diet. So I started taking courses, um, and I thought I was living a very healthy life. I played a lot of sports. Um, I had a career that I loved. Um, you know, I worked a lot of hours, uh, but I loved it. And I went to the gym like four or six times a week, so I was very fit. And then one time, one summer, I was um, I was 32 years old, and um, I went to make a hero play, and the ball took a funny turn, and it ended up coming up and hitting me in the eye, and I broke my orbital floor. And the doctor was like, listen, we need to perform emergency surgery, but your eye is too swollen, so I want you to go home, lay flat on your back, for a month and do not move. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I'm always go, go, go. Like, I don't know how to sit still. This, you know, this is so foreign to me. And it was mental torture. So I was at home one day on the laptop and an ad popped up about self-examinations. I'm like, man, I never do those. And I did. And that's when I found um, a lump in my left breast. Long story short, it ended up being a breast cancer. And when I started my um, conventional journey, I was really underwhelmed with my, my conventional options. I'm like, what do you mean I can only do surgery, chemo, radiation, and hormone treatment? You know, those are my only options. You know, there, every you know woman out there having these these you know going through this um, this type of treatment, and we're all so different. It really didn't make sense to me. And when I'm sick, we build up our immune system. We don't destroy it, uh, which chemo does. So I also wanted to explore the holistic world. And when I first went down this rabbit hole, it was so big. I didn't know where to start. I was so overwhelmed. So really, um, you know, since then, I've become a certified health and nutrition consultant, a certified raw food chef, and I am really about empowering people and simplifying that journey um, so they can be their healthiest and happiest uh, self. I think it's also important to say that that cancer hasn't come back yes, as a result exactly. of these choices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a biggie. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to dive in and I'm going to talk about how we can build up our own natural medicine cabinet um, at home, which is awesome. So I, I still want to say that I, I still use conventional medicine, um, but it's just not, you know, my first choice. It is a last result, resort. Um, you know, I've got two children, a three-year-old and an almost two-year-old. And um, trust me, when they were ready to pop out, I was like crying out for that epidural. So I'm not hating in the, you know, the medicine world, but we just go to it too often, right? And a lot of those medicines are toxic, and then we need medicines for the side effects um, and medicines for those side effects so that, you know, it just gets a little out of control. So it's really important, you know, Mother Nature has, give, you know, has given us amazing resources, so why not use them? Um, so you don't want to be going through your medicine cabinet and replacing all of it all at once because that will blow your budget, right? It's pretty expensive. So slowly you want to start replacing it as things pop up. 
And another great way to um, save some money is when you go to your health food store, whether it be um, Healthy Planet or Big Carrot, or there's a lot of like mom and pop shops um, as stores as well, or even online stores, but check out what's on sale or check out the clearance items. I went to one, um, you know, about a month ago to pick up some probiotics for my kids and the guy um, who was working there and the people that work there are very knowledgeable. Um, so talk to them about things. And he was like, hey, why don't you buy this one on sale? And I was like, why am I buying it on sale? Like, what's wrong with it? And he's like, no, no, it, it expires in three months. Well, it was only good for a month. So I'm like, for sure, I'm going to use it, you know, before then. I'm like, done. So I got it for like half price. So those were, um, you know, some great tips on how to save some money. So I normally store my natural medicine cabinet in two places. One in the kitchen, and that's for our, like, everything that we're using on a daily basis. You know, our supplements, our superfoods, um, probiotics, vitamins, you know, things of that nature. And then also the bathroom. And this is where, you know, I'm pulling the remedies, you know, things that we need, um, you know, as colds and, and flus come up for us. So I'm going to talk about um, different ailments and um, and the best type of natural medicine that you can use for them. So respiratory health, eucalyptus. Now this is pretty popular. Um, you know, that Vicks vapor rub that we use, um, which is uh, pretty toxic. You know, it's got petroleum in it, the petroleum jelly, that Vaseline in it, right? Which is um, fantastic for our cars, not so great for our skin. Um, so you really want to, I would, you know, switch that out and put in some eucalyptus with some coconut oil. You can rub that on your chest or even your feet. Um, you always hear about those old wise tales about rubbing things on our feet. Well, it's all about the meridians and it actually works. So even if you feel like a fool rubbing it on your foot and putting some socks on, try it out because you will feel better. And also when, you know, whenever my kids, this can be, I should also say like this can be pretty potent with, um, you know, pets and with kids. So even using a diffuser, um, you know, do your research, do your homework when it comes to kids and pets, but also using a diffuser, you know, putting a couple drops in diluting it with lots of water, um, you know, I really don't see the harm in that, but I'm not a doctor, so make sure you uh, check with your natural medicine, you know, practitioner and, and see what the best route is for you. Um, but that definitely helps when we are coughing up a storm. Elderberry syrup. This one's fantastic at boosting your immune system. You can use this as a proactive approach. Um, I'll take two tablespoons, I'll mix this in warm water, and it actually tastes great, or you can put it in your smoothies. And this is fantastic for respiratory health. So if you are coughing, go get yourself some elderberry syrup from your local food store. And it's not expensive either. Now, this really isn't medicine, cold mist um, humidifier, but this is something that we have going in our bedroom all the time because winter air can be very dry, right, which can affect our throat and our lungs. Um, and an essential oil diffuser. Now this can be, if you can get one that's both a diffuser and a humidifier, this is fantastic because then you can drop some essential oils in there that can help not only clean the air and clean your lungs, but it can help boost your immune system. How cool is that? So moving on to our first aid kit. Now when we think lavender essential oil, we think relaxation, we think calming, soothing, but it's actually amazing on scrapes, cuts, and burns. Um, so this is an always like, you know, a great essential oil to have in the house. Frankincense essential oil. This is huge in the cancer world. Um, you know, a lot of people will take this uh, one drop a day under their tongue. Um, but this is also great in removing ingrown hairs or great for healing uh, in general for those scrapes and cuts. Tea tree oil. This is like Mother Nature's antibacterial oil. You can use it, you know, use a carrier oil with this because it can be pretty potent. So you don't want to ingest this. But, you know, it's, they, they put tea tree oil in, like, soaps and perfumes and cleaning products, um, deodorants. So a great one to have at home. Oregano oil. This is fantastic. I call this one Mother Nature's Listerine. It's so good for your gum health. It's got amazing antibacterial properties. I will, like, brush my teeth and, you know, floss. And if I go, like, you know, X amount of days or even a week without flossing, and then my gums start to get a bit irritated, you know, I will put oregano oil, which is, you know, definitely dilute this bad boy. Otherwise, you will be cursing my name. But dilute it, put it on your um, toothbrush, rub it under water, and um, and then brush your teeth with it after you, you know, you brush with toothpaste, floss, and then brush with oregano oil. This is going to feel fantastic. It's definitely um, going to soothe your gums um, and make your mouth like feel like you've just been to the dentist. It's amazing. Um, Arnica Montana. This one's definitely one of my favorites. 
this was actually discovered in Europe about like the 1850s. A bunch of like mountain climbers were watching, you know, the goats, and any time that they fell or injured themselves, they go straight to this flower. And this flower is actually part of the daisy family. Who knew? Um, but any time that they were injured, they would eat this flower, and they would definitely, you know, they would feel better. And when in doubt, in you know, when you're dealing with Mother Nature, when in doubt, follow the animals. They know their stuff. They're so in tuned with Mother Nature, right? They are grounded. You always hear about like tsunamis or you know earthquakes. You never hear like thousands Charlotte, of... you're taking it all the way there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you never hear about you know thousands of animals dying because they're running the other direction. They know what's coming. So if they are all running left. Don't be going right. You know, follow them. <laughs> Start running with them. Where are we going, animals? Doesn't matter. Just keep running with them, you know? <laughs> so this comes in pellets, gels, creams, ointments, and this is great for wounds, sprains, and bruises. This is really Mother Nature's Tylenol. So you definitely want to pick this up at your health food store and keep this in your natural medicine cabinet. Um, now for the stomach. Um, we've got peppermint essential oil. So you can dilute this again with coconut oil and rub this on your stomach. First time I had a stomach ache, somebody suggested this. I was like, you lost your damn mind. This is not going to work. But this is amazing. It actually works. So if you have a stomach ache, pick up some peppermint essential oil and give it a try. Um, activated charcoal. We hear this in the conventional world. If somebody overdoses, you know, they'll, um, they'll use charcoal to help pump their stomach. But this is, you can actually get this in your health food store in like pellets or tablets. And this helps alleviate gas and bloating. And it also helps you with them, give you like a gentle digestive cleanse, which is awesome. Now, ginger tea. A lot of times if we're feeling sick or upset stomach, we've got the flu and we're nauseous. Some people will say like, you know, go get some ginger ale. Well, the reason why ginger ale works is because it has ginger in it. But really, it's not the best thing for us, right? It's packed full of sugar. Sugar is acidic. And it can help that cold and flu like flourish even more in our system. So the best thing to do is to have ginger, you know, in the house, you know, just um, take off the skin and uh, thin, thinly slice it and put it in a mug and let it sit with some warm water for, you know, five, 10 minutes and then drink it. You can drink this even after meals to help with dig digestion. And it is definitely going to calm your upset stomach. Probiotics, fermented foods, if you've ever been to any of my workshops, I preach this like it's going out of style. Probiotics, we want to be taking every day or eating fermented food every day. You know, the majority of our immune system is in our gut, so we always hear these buzzwords like heal your gut. Well, the reason why we want to heal our gut is because um, our immune system's there. So if we have an unhealthy gut, that means our immune system has become compromised and we can you know, uh, those cold and flus and everything else that's going around in the winter can really come and attack our system. So make sure you knock up on your probiotics and fermented food. We talked about elderberry syrup, but neti potty, again, it's not medicine, but um, it's great to have on hand to help clean out those nasal passages. Vitamin C, you want to be boosting your uh, immune system with vitamin C supplements, but also through your food. And it's not just in fruit. There, you know, vitamin C can be found in, um, you know, in uh, red peppers, um, you know, all kinds of uh, yummy vegetables too. Um, vitamin D, this is one that's like vital. This is a low levels of vitamin D is linked to so many Western diseases. So you definitely want to boost your vitamin D. Um, this is vital to our immune health. Now, the Canadian Health, um, you know, guys always talk about having about a thousand. They recommend a thousand IUs, so it's international units a day. Well, you know, in the national health world, they talk about doing, you know, six thousand to eight thousand. So that's six to eight, you know, six to eight drops of um, vitamin D in your um, in your mouth. So the best thing to do for you is to go to your doctor, get some blood work done, and see where your vitamin D levels are. You know, in the past we would have vitamin D levels from our food, and because it's winter and we're, you know, we're definitely blessed to be eating things like avocado and bananas and, you know, oranges and things like that. But we know that our Canadian winter butts are not growing that locally, right? So it's coming from far away and it's ripening on the truck which means it's not being exposed to any sunshine. And that's where normally our food would get that vitamin D. So we are really lacking it. Not only us ourselves and our skin, we're not exposed to sunlight, but we're definitely not getting it from our food. Um, so look at those levels uh, with your doctor and make sure you make those adjustments for you and your kids. Echinacea, 
This is a big one, very popular. You can use this as preventative, but also um, if you are battling a cold or flu, you can take this in drops, capsules, or tea. Oregano oil, we talked about this um, before, um, strong antibacterial properties, but you can dilute this and rub this uh, with coconut oil on your feet and put some socks on. Now, garlic is huge at battling colds um, and flu. Um, you can juice this and you might lose some friends because you are going to be sweating it out. You're going to be breathing it out and people will be taking a few steps back. Um, or the, you know, the God bless the soul, whoever made the capsules, <laughs> you know, those are brilliant too and will help boost your immune system. And of course, taking a bath. If you're taking, um, taking a bath and using some bath salts or some essential oils, you are detoxing those toxins out of your skin. So not going to help you feel relaxed and feel better, but um, it's also going to help boost your immune system. Now, many times in the winter, we get those sore throats because um, it's cold outside, right? We're breathing the cold air in, but don't underestimate the power of warm salt water. Put some of your favorite salt water, Himalayan salt, sea salt, into a mug with some warm water and, um, and gargle it. Gargle it before you go to work a couple of times. Gargle, you know, keep it in your bathroom so you're gargling anytime you brush your teeth. Um, when you get home from work, before you go to bed, gargle as many times as you can, even at the onset of swallowing too much um, post-nasal drip. If you've experienced that, you know a sore throat's coming soon. So stay on top of that and take a proactive approach. Now, for a full-blown throat, um, your sore throat, uh, a great uh, remedy for that is a um, tea called throat coat tea and you can pick that up at your health food store that's fantastic raw honey although it's yummy and it's a natural sweetener and i'm talking the real honey not like the man-made in the in the little bear sitting in the grocery store the billy bee the billy bee is what it's called okay yeah not the man-made crab but the real honey um this has strong antibacterial properties to it so not like food really is medicine um, so we can put, put this with, uh, you know, warm water. We can have a spoonful of it. We can mix it in our favorite tea. Um, and this will definitely help soothe our throat. And of course, daily, as soon as you get up, have some warm lemon water. Squeeze half a lemon into your cup with some warm water and drink that. Although lemon is very acidic, when it goes into our body, it actually becomes alkaline. Um, so we can help boost our immune system that way. And even putting a couple of drops of lemon essential oil because um, that also has the um, lemon peel in it, which is even more potent, uh, which is awesome. And of course, any immune boosting energy rich foods, this is going to help us. You know that we always hear about this acidic versus alkaline diet or lifestyle or whatever it is. But disease and illness can only grow and flourish in an acidic environment. So you want to eat more alkaline rich foods. Um, so you want to think about if you think about your body as a you know vehicle or car, you want to eat something that's easy to digest. Um, so in the past, my favorite food by far was like jerk pork, rice and peas. Now, jerk pork takes quite a bit of time to chew in your mouth. So you're using a lot of gas to break that down. Now, that's just the first part of your digestive system. When it goes into your stomach and into your you know, intestines and colon, it, you still need a lot of gas to break that down. But it's not rich in nutrients, so I'm not replenishing that gas. So now I'm working on fumes. But if I eat something that's really easy to digest, so, so say I'm having um, you know, brown, uh, brown rice pasta with some veggies, you know, it's easy to digest, um, it's rich in nutrients, and I'm reabsorbing those nutrients, so now I'm filling up my gas tank, and because I didn't have, you know, I didn't have to waste so much gas breaking that food down, that extra gas can go back into my body and repair whatever it needs to repair. So, you know, things like smoothies and juices are fantastic at boosting our immune system, it's rich, full of energy foods, Fermented foods, which we talked about, drinking lots of water, um, you know, is, is great at flushing our system out with toxins. And the moment we get sick, we want to cut out meat, dairy, and alcohol, like right away. Um, if we start eating meat, dairy, and alcohol when we're sick, we're just going to, um, you know, get worse very quickly. Healthy skin. Now, healthy skin, we can always have, you know, lots of dry skin in the winter months. So you want to be using warm water when you bathe or when you shower, um, not hot water, because hot water is just going to pull the moisture right out of your skin. Um, dry brushing. This one's fantastic. This helps exfoliate. You want to start with your feet and brush up towards the heart, always towards the heart. Um, and uh, if you're going swimming in the winter months, you know, you can put on coconut oil on your skin prior to going in. Chlorinated pools are going to dry out your skin, but it's also very toxic. Um, so protect your skin by putting some coconut oil on and on the kitties too. Um, moisturizing daily and you want to be using clean um, skincare products. 
skincare products, they matter, right? Our skin is our largest organ. So if we're putting toxic skincare products on, shampoo, lotion, you know, face wash, whatever it is, um, a lot of them are filled with, um, you know, nasty animal products that they don't want in the food in industry, um, toxins, um, home hormone disruptors, you know, all of that jazz. So you really want to avoid that and pick out some clean skincare products. And you want to be staying hydrated. And hydration doesn't just come from drinking water. It comes from our food. So raw food. And I know we may not want to run towards salads, you know, when we're sick or in the winter, but these are fantastic for our skin. It's really Mother Nature's anti-aging um, products. So who doesn't want that? <laughs> um, take a walk on the wild side to so really connect with nature. You know, you can be that person that hibernates and hates winter, you know, during those few months, or you can embrace it dress appropriately, get outside, get some fresh air, you know, go tobogganing, make snow angels, um, do the hike, you know, do what you need to do. But um, this is going to help elevate your mood by having fun and boost your immune system because our immune system not only is just, uh, you know, with our food and in our lifestyle, um, but it's also with in our mental state, which uh, Alicia's going to talk a little bit more about um, as well. So as Charlotte mentioned, uh, one of the things that we don't often think about when we talk about wellness is what feeling good does for us. And um, one of the things we always say is it helps you to access your inner peace. It helps you um, feel empowered to activate your own power. And also it um, gives you the ability to unlock your own potential, which makes us feel very hopeful and uh, excited about the future. So first and foremost, let's kick it off by saying you are important. <laughs> and I really want to take a moment uh, with you to just sort of say that this is something you need to tell yourself every day. Stand in front of the mirror. Make this the first message that you give yourself. Um, it's a great way to start the day, and it sets the tone for a positive day. Follow it by self-care, right? I mean, that's a big part of self-care is yeah. valuing yourself. But I always say to people, nobody needs you more than you right now. It's I liken it to the airplane safety rules where, you know, they tell you no matter what, put the oxygen on yourself first and then on the people you love. Um, this is very important because you, we really can't be who we need to be for the people we care for if we're feeling depleted, exhausted, um, malnourished, and, um, you know, not well, like feeling fragile. Um, you know, one of the things I always say is like, if you're in the habit of putting everyone first, then you're teaching them that you come second. And we really need to stop that because no one's ever going to say to you, um, yeah. <laughs> it's your time now. Why don't you take a couple days and get a massage? And <laughs> it just doesn't happen. Um, Self-preservation. Uh, this is really important. It's sort of the uh, overarching theme of everything that we talk about, right? We're really talking about taking care of the way you feel, taking care of the way you're aging, and taking care of the way you're thinking. So I always say stay away from people who make you feel like you're hard to love. Um, and this is especially true for family and friends because this is the, one of the hardest things to do. But when we are um, experiencing self-doubt or our self-esteem is being lowered by by harsh language or negative um, exchanges, we really um, make ourselves more vulnerable to illness. We compromise our immune system. And so what I always say to people is see if you can start to spend less time I'm not talking about big confrontations or anything like that, but just try to spend less time with people that make you feel bad and more time with people that make you feel good. This will improve your health overall. And the next thing I would say is self-compassion. This is huge. You will not find outside of you what you cannot see inside of you. And it's really important to understand this because if you aren't gentle with yourself, if you don't recognize the very real humanity um, that you experience every day, I mean, none of us are perfect, um, then it's even harder for you to recognize it in the people you love and especially in your kids. And so one of the most important things for your mental and emotional wellness is self-compassion. Yes, and you know, we make mistakes, but it's really how we treat ourselves about those mistakes that make a difference in our wellness. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> Stop saying yes to shit you hate. Um, I know this is a really hard thing to do, but believe me, all that time that you think you don't have will suddenly free up if you're not doing things that you don't enjoy doing. The other thing with that is... The more you say no to people, and, and you're saying no with love, right? Like this isn't about being rude. The, um, the greater their respect uh, rises for you over time, but also, um, 
you just get in the habit of self-advocating, which is something that uh, is sort of taken away from us when we're when we're little girls, right? Mm-hmm. Every time we sort of ask for what we want or demanded what we want or said we didn't like someone or any of that when we were girls, we were told right away that that makes us rude or, or you're embarrassing your mom and stuff like that. So we learn, nice. Yeah, playing nice. So yeah. we learn very quickly to suppress our own voice for the comfort of others. And um, when it comes to health and wellness, it's the opposite. That's true. You have to let your voice be heard. You have to know that you can take up the space that you need to take up. And, um, yeah, stop saying yes to shit. Right? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> this sounds good as a sentence, too. <laughs> Next up is self-respect. You do not have to do things the way they have always been done. Too often, um, we are in autopilot um, doing things based on what we've inherited from our families or um, societal pressure or just experiential learning. And the problem with that is we're not figuring out what we need to do for ourselves, right? We're experiencing a, a, a quiet frustration from not living authentically um, our own lives, but we're... Um, we're really just kind of bouncing around from idea to idea and none of it is tethered to our own hearts. So one of the things I really want you to start to think about as you uh, go forward in this year is what you can do differently, like in the way that matters to you and not based on other people's expectations. Ah, self-worth. You know, everything that has to do with wellness is can be traced back to self-worth, yes. but also things related to prosperity, um, the quality of our relationships, and so on and so forth. And I think the first place is learning how to not care about what other people think. You know, we spend so much of our lives worrying about what other people think that we're not actually living our lives. And the reality is, if someone wants to think less of you, if someone wants to think negative things about you, judge or criticize, they are going to do that anyways. So it's high time you start thinking about yourself as, like we said, the most important person or unimportant person at that, um, and really start to think about um, what it is you want to do in spite of what people are saying or what they might think. Self-love. Oh my gosh, it's such a a, a coin word. We hear it all the time these days, and I really want to say to you, it's not woo-woo shit, okay? (laughs) Self-love is really probably the strongest tool you can have in your life, right? It is um, the way that we are uh, more anchored in wellness, more anchored in solid and strong relationships, more anchored in abundance and prosperity. That self-love piece is is kind of gangster, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> and so it's really, and let's like, let's clear um, the bullshit around this. This is not about thinking you're better than everyone. This is about just knowing that you're not inferior to anyone. You're allowed to take up the space that you need to take up in the world. Your voice is worthy of being heard. And whatever you need to make your life better is something that you have a right to pursue. Love that. <laughs> and I always say this is the beginning of anything you want. So once you pursue your health and you get in the habit of taking care of yourself and you get in the habit of self-advocating, you really open up the possibility to have the life that you want to have, right? Um, Suddenly you feel stronger, you feel more confident, and what do you do with all this wellness? Well, you set goals and you go after them, right? (laughs) So, So here's a couple of tips on some of the things we deal with most often. Anxiety. First and foremost, stay present. You are not making your future right now. Oh, sorry. I meant to say exactly the opposite of what I just said. You (laughs) are making your future right now with the choices that you're making every day. Um, The only way you really handle that future that you're so worried about is to make the right choices today. The next thing I would say is just say no to perfect. We get so anxious about being perfect, and that goes back to not caring about what people think, but also really recognizing that perfection is temporary because you're going to find another way to make things more perfect, and so you find yourself on the hamster wheel of perfection. It just never ends. Finally, just breathe. The more overwhelmed you become, the more um, your life starts to feel heavy, the more I encourage you to find solace in a really deep breath. We think we need to respond to things right away. We think we need to act right away. We think we need to jump when we are called, but we don't actually. You can take a beat, you can collect yourself, and then proceed from a place of confidence instead of a a place of um, fear. Stress. 
Number one, of course, and I, you already know this, but prioritize your health. Your energy and your well-being is your most valuable currency. If you don't have it available to give, you are out in the world uh, with an empty tank, and it's just not a way to continue living because over time, you're setting yourself up for illness. Charlotte and I have both been there, and mm -hmm. we've experienced it, and yeah. we have to tell you, your health is number one. The next thing I would say is when you're feeling those high feelings of anxiety and you're super stressed, start to think of gratitude. I know it's so cheesy, but really, if you can come up with at least 10 things that you feel grateful for, you automatically shift your internal well-being, which just interrupts the, um, the negative things that you're feeling and experiencing and gives you an opportunity to move forward in a better light. Finally, again, just say no. So this is another way of saying stop saying yes to shit you hate. But no really is a full sen sentence that does not require an, an explanation. This is really hard for women because we're told that saying no makes us unnice. But again, if you're moving away from caring what people think, you're moving towards loving yourself. Dealing with other people. Oh, man, I think we could do a whole workshop yeah. on this. <laughs> But the first and foremost is accept the apology you never got. Whatever you're holding on to, whatever anger, whatever sadness about the person who did this and that, at a minimum, you can forgive the person internally. And that doesn't require the person's involvement. You have to do this because rage and, and sadness and, and uh, toxicity, sorry, create toxicity in your body. And it's just not worth it to hurt yourself again after you've already been hurt. Communicate with tenderness. This is really important because we've lost sight of how to communicate in a soft and meaningful way. Um, if you want people to communicate with you in um, a way that feels easy to hear, in a constructive way, in a positive way, then you've got to set the tone for that. Also, set boundaries. Um, this is really important. You already know who the people are in your life that drive you crazy, and um, <laughs> it's time for them to get a message. <laughs> and that message is not now and not anymore. Finally, you know, access your peace by recognizing that there is an unwavering stillness that already exists within. Activate your power by keeping your mind in the present moment and unlock your potential by taking ownership of your life every day. All of this is made easier by learning to meditate. I'm just putting that little plug in there, <laughs> but we'll talk about that more soon. Thank you so much for being here. Um, if you have a little bit more time, just wait one second. We have something very special for you. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, the presentation that we just did, that's just kind of skimming the surface um, of how, um, you know, what the type of work that Alicia and I um, bring to the table. You know, this year we've created, uh, we worked really hard on creating a four-part uh, series um, that's going to be starting in January 18th. And this is really how to set yourself up to have the best 2018 ever. I still can't believe I'm saying 2018. How crazy is that? <laughs> so week one, we're going to be starting about the detox. So we're going to be detoxing, you know, everything that's toxic in our, in our um, lives. lives really. really, mind, body, heart. We're running the gamut of yes. it. Yeah. So we're going to figure out what are toxic um, or the toxins in our life and then how to detox in a healthy, safe way. And we're also going to tell you the secret to detox because I think a lot of people don't know what it is and yes. we're going to really take that all the way home for you so you get it. Yeah. And then on our second week, um, January 25th, um, we're going to be looking at the rebuild. So after we've cleared out all the negativity um, in our bodies and um, our emotions, um, we're really going to look at what we need to do to start rebuilding our bodies and regaining our health. Yes, we're going to set you up like how to be your own wellness warrior and, you know, and set you up with a routine that's actually going to work in your life. <laughs> and now that brings us to the third week, the balance. Which is February the 1st. And this is where we really get into the actions that we have to take every day to make our lives what we want them to be. So Charlotte's going to be making us some incredible food and you'll be having that, you'll get to taste that um, incredible food too yeah. during her food demonstration. Um, but we'll also be looking at food in terms of um, using it as a tool for our goals and our health and our happiness. Yeah. And we're also going to be uh, demystifying balance, this weird thing that keeps coming up that women are supposed to strive for, but it's kind of bullshit. It's so bullshit. <laughs> 
<laughs> and also building stronger relationships and looking at mental health in the age of social media. Yeah, that brings us to week four, which will be February 8th. And really, this is all about stepping into your power. So we've set you up from week one to week three, and week four is coming all together. Um, and we're going to be talking about, you know, how to be healthy on the go, um, conquering your fears and embracing the change, and really celebrating you. And also setting, uh, setting and achieving your goals, right? So we've gone through the process of clearing the slate, um, rebuilding the foundation, starting to... Um, you know, build the house brick by brick. And this is the finishing piece, right? Yeah. How do you take all of this? How do you take all this feeling better and really, um, you know, conquer your fears and really like get on with the life that you really want to live and deserve to live. Yes. Deserve. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, Alicia and I, between the two of us, we have um, 20 years each. That's 40 years of experience. Um, we've taken many courses, many certification courses, you know, lots of education, you know, all through of our failures and our successes. And we have combined that um, in this, what we feel is a brilliant four series uh, workshop. And I think it's important to say that, like, there's no bullshit in this. There's no gimmicks. There's no like quick fixes. This is really a step-by-step -step process of um, creating the life that you want to live and feeling the way you want to feel while living it. Yeah. So this course is actually valued at twenty-six seventy-five, which is quite a lot, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> to fork out right after the holidays. Um, so we really want to take this um, together, all of our knowledge, and simplify this for you. And as way as like thanking you for joining us on this webinar, we'd like to offer you this one-time special offer of only one ninety-nine until awesome. January fourth. It doesn't last forever. It's it just until last. Sunday night. <laughs> yeah. So all you have to do to join us for these four Thursdays, starting January the eighteenth, yeah, um, and ending on February the eighth from seven to ten p.m. at thirteen eleven. In Queen Street East is click on the button below. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And certainly if you have any questions or um, you need more information or um, there's something that you want to know about, just please just get in touch with either one of us. We'd be happy to talk with you. Yeah. And we're always able to send the link back to you um, to capture this deal. Um, we're so committed to you. I will add, um, I was listening to a podcast the other day and they were saying that the attention span of a goldfish is nine seconds. Oh, geez. And I know, which, <laughs> and we were like, oh, okay, I thought it was less than that. But humans is only five seconds. So this is something that you're even thinking like, oh, yes, I think I could use this in my life. And you need to act. I mean, anytime that I've like, you know, published a book or I've done anything new, I've never felt ready. I've always questioned myself, but I jump in. So if this is something that's even speaking to you, even in the littlest bit, jump in, jump in. You will not regret it. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm going to close with my favorite quote, your life will shrink and expand proportionate to your courage. And I hope that you will be courageous enough to commit to yourself and your wellness this year. Don't forget to click the button below. Thank you Thank so you much. much. Bye guys.